Get off the desk. Don't show them your butt. Make them pay for that. Oh. This is Hecate, but like, it, she's named after the goddess, but it's spelled like H-E-K-I-T-T-Y. We're doing makeup today. Wait, I'm gonna do a tongue pop. Oh my God, that one, that was actually pretty good. Y'all, I had a Celsius like a couple minutes ago, probably about 20 minutes ago now. So um, it's noon, by the way, it's 1230 and um, I've had a Celsius. So we're probably not gonna sleep tonight, but we might clean my whole room today and still have time for a panic attack. So I just shaped my eyebrows with this little thing and I'm gonna put on sunscreen now because I forgot to put on sunscreen today. That's not very good of me. If you hear my fan, ignore it. I've said it in every single one of my videos, just ignore it. Like you know how whenever the sunlight is streaming in through your windows and you see dust floating? Did anyone else's parents tell them that those were fairies? Because I remember as a kid being told that they were fairies and sometimes I like to think that they still are. Okay, I'm gonna take my shirt off. You guys, you know what's horrible? I injured myself pretty badly and um, like several months ago. And so for the last several weeks, I haven't been to the gym and I feel so skinny. And it, I know as like a drag queen, it's like, yay. But no, actually like, I feel like I, <laughs> I feel like I'm like losing all my muscle and it's making me really sad. Not to get deep in the first like five minutes of this video, but like, yeah, I feel really skinny and it's making me really sad. Okay, so I'm gonna put this wig cap on and then also put this sweet little shirt on. Oh my God, I should put on sunscreen like I said I was going to. This is the sunscreen I use, darlings. Um, Faye, F-A-E. It's only SPF 30, but it's, it feels like applying a lacquer to my face, like a porcelain finish. Oh, this is why I don't usually have caffeine. It makes me like crazy. I'm one of those people that like cannot do caffeine. I used to be able to whenever I worked at a coffee shop. I feel like I did really well with caffeine. Now that I'm just like a normal person doing normal job things, I can't have caffeine or I get really anxious and hyper uh, and then I can't sleep at night, which might not be good because I'm actually getting in drag for another video where I watch, I think I'm going to watch a horror movie. Tonight. I think I might watch The Deliverance. I enjoy being scared. I actually do really enjoy horror movies. Like I love the horror genre. My favorite, I know it might be a little bit cliche, but it's a classic, Scream. That is my favorite horror movie. Just because I love that it makes fun of like the classic horror tropes and the classic horror movies. With my injury, I've been having to do so many things. I mean, right now it just feels like I've been getting naked for everybody and everything. Oh, today's the day. We're gonna talk about the boy today. It's like such a non-story. We're gonna get to it. We're gonna get to the boy for sure. But first, let's talk about my injury. Um, so ever since the last drag show I did, my left foot was hurting pretty badly. I was wearing shoes that were not the right size and they didn't have any ankle support, so I kept rolling my ankle. And whenever I left, the nerve on the side of my foot connecting to my pinky toe hurt so badly it did not feel good i mean i was like this is just drag pain like it, it's gonna go away i'm just i just have to stay off of it and it'll go away and in theory you know that might have worked had i actually followed through and stayed off of it but i literally went to work the very next day and i kept working all week and i didn't take many days off i had maybe three days off not even close together like i probably had like three days off altogether that entire month And the foot injury started to get worse where all of a sudden all my legs are hurting. And so we get to a point at the very end of the summer, all of a sudden everything's fine. Everything feels fine and I'm not working anymore. I don't have to go to work. I have the, I have like a whole week off. Like any person who was working the entire summer with very few days off would do. I did not take that week for granted. I stayed in bed so, so long. That was when it started to hit me, oh, something doesn't feel quite right uh, right now. So with that week off, my body was like, hey, how, how about all the pain that you've been ignoring all summer? How about we give it all to you right now in just a flooding wave of cortisol? My anxiety got really bad that week and my body was aching, just aching everywhere. Every part of my body hurt so badly. It got to the point where my mom was like, you need to go like talk to somebody about this. So I went and got a massage and the masseuse was sh was shocked that I had only booked 30 minutes for a massage. 
She was like, you've been feeling this much pain and you only wanted to book a 30 minute deep tissue massage. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, you're gonna come back next week after we're done with today. So I booked a second session for an hour and then she was like, just get a subscription. It's cheaper that way. And you're gonna need work every month if this is what your life is like. I'm 19, but I feel 83. The way that like anything I do now hurts so much, but it's just because I wasn't listening to my body at all this summer. Now it's like, hey, next time let's take care of ourselves. So anyways, the, massa the massage was great, but um, it, didn't take all the pain away. It was just like a temporary relief from the pain. I knew that I needed to get it done, but it just didn't, it didn't have any long lasting effects for what I was feeling, which concerned me. I was like, I just, I genuinely thought it was just muscle soreness, but now I'm waking up and my legs are completely asleep. I've never had that happen in my life. I was like, how am I sleeping? that there's no blood flow circulating in my legs. So then I started to get concerned. Something's wrong with my lower back. I'm 19, what the f do I have to worry about back pain for? So I ended up having to go to the chiropractor and he was like, I don't think that there's necessarily something wrong with anything but your muscles. I mean, that was good to hear, but I don't quite believe him because I'm like, no, something's wrong I promise you he operated on me and uh, it felt really nice i would never been to the chiropractor before and uh, I don't think my biological dad's insurance covers it so I had to pay out of pocket for it and that was a little bit depressing but f America's healthcare honestly like the things that I've needed to do just to get slightly better should not cost as much as they do he was gonna put like an electrical pulse thing on it and that felt so good I don't like it was, it hurt a lot, but then my back felt so much better. And I, I mean, I don't know how to describe it. It just like turned on the electrical pulses and it feels like someone went in there and put a bunch of little UFOs making circles around my muscles or like steamrollers, like three different steamrollers, but it's just electricity. It was so interesting and it felt really nice on my back. So I had two appointments with him. He popped me and like, realigned me um and that was like that was honestly just what i needed and i mean i can't say that it didn't help because afterwards i felt pretty good his only advice to me was like just be easy like on yourself like, be nice to yourself listen to your body next time and um take plenty of painkillers so i've been taking um advil <laughs> every day for the past like 10 days which means i can't take anymore because you're not supposed to take any for longer than that but i've been stretching every day and i'm noticing my body like getting back to like a like a healthy healthy flexible state moral of the story is if you are in pain please listen to your body if you don't take care of your body now while you're young or even if you're not young it's always important at every age to take care of your body so that it functions for years to come. I don't wanna be 30 with bad calves. Like, okay, let's glue down my brows. We've got a whole lot of shit going on with my skin right now. I usually pride myself on having really good skin. There's a whole lot of shit going on with it for some reason. So if you're actually trying to follow this tutorial, I don't even think I introduced what I'm doing today, but basically I wipe down my brows with some alcohol just to get rid of any moisturizer, sunscreen, whatever residue maybe on it that might affect me uh, gluing down my brows. And then I'm taking the Elmer's purple glue stick and I'm going in against the direction of growth and uh, swirling around and then going back over it really hard in the direction of growth. And now I'm just combing out the, the excess glue and pressing down with my brush as I do it. If you're a beginner queen, and you're frustrated because you can't get your brows to glue down properly. I used to stress about it all the time. I still stress about it a lot of the time. It just, it literally just takes practice. I don't know like what changes, but you just get better at it. I can't tell you how I got better at it because I just kept doing it. And then suddenly I got better at it. And I'm still not perfect at it, but I think that might just be because I have so much eyebrow. Can I also just say thank you guys for 700 subscribers. I'm literally this close to be able to monetize my videos. And that is so exciting. For such a long time, I have wanted to do this for a living. It just makes me really happy that there are 700 of you that think that I'm worth uh, coming back to. So, I mean, that just makes me really happy, honestly. I don't even know 700 people. I don't even know 100 people. Maybe I do. The eyebrows might be an adventure today. Me, like, talking about, like, oh my god, you guys just have to, like, keep practicing and you'll get better at it. And then I'm, like, struggling to glue down my eyebrows. What do you want? My cat. 
is being very needy right now because she loves my sister more than she loves me and my sister's at school right now. All I know is she better not jump on this table while I got glue in my hands because I'm not gluing cat hair to my face. You know, I think I might be slightly allergic to cats, but I don't care because they're so cute. Because thinking about it, there's a lot of people in my family that are allergic to cats, but we don't really care because we all love them so much. And um, for everyone out there, like if you're dating someone, one of the first questions I ask people that I'm interested in is if they like cats because that tells me exactly what kind of person they are in the case that we might ever be living together um i need to know if that's an okay thing and if it's not that's a deal breaker for me personally and then secondly it tells me how you feel about control it tells me so much about your personality if you don't like cats if you actually vehemently hate cats i immediately don't trust you if you just want something that loves you unconditionally without thinking about your actual personality or how you treat them like a dog i don't really trust that it's okay to like dogs because i do love dogs I, I really there's not an animal that i don't like well i know that i'll get through this oh my god okay i did just watch global all-stars today <sighs> i guess we are going to talk about global all-stars so basically what i found out is that whenever we're looking at the first this eyebrow does look a little clunky, but it's fine because we're just practicing drag. Well, not really. We are getting into drag for a video, so. Barton kings with on ships in my wake At the sight of me All of my skin is for you to know me That's a little sneak peek of a song I wrote that's probably coming out either next year or the year after. I am coming back to the music industry. Everyone cheer! Woo! I am coming back to the music industry. I've been writing songs that I'm really proud of right now. And um, I mean, I wouldn't say that they're like great. I wouldn't say that they're great songs, but I am proud of them. They're, it's very, the direction I'm going is very, very different than what I was doing before. Anyways, back to what I was saying about Drag Race. I miss when Drag Race was crunchy. I miss when you got to see real drag queens. I miss when Raven looked a little busted sometimes. I also miss when Raven looked her actual skin color. Every single time that she enters the workroom, like she did today on Global All Stars, I just think of Alexis P. Bevels going, Raven enters the workroom in dark mode. Because literally, what the f is going on? Raven, stop using Rue's foundation. At this point, Rue is looking white. Rue looks like a white girl. Rue is over here enjoying her pumpkin spice latte while Raven's over here trying to take over RuPaul's job. I'm a little bit like Lux Noir London in the sense that I do keep record of drag race in my mind like i really do enjoy thinking about drag race like sports i think that's what i love about it so much is you can watch it and like take notes and like track it like sports and stuff like that and but like it's like subjective too so you can like form your own opinions on it whereas like football it's like well he you know you either score or you don't i don't know i don't know much about actual sports okay i'm pressing powder foundation into my brows while the glue is still wet and i'm pressing hard just to flatten out my eyebrows okay i'm gonna clean up the edges of my brows just a little bit oh this makeup wipe is dry hello hi dry this is dry so we're gonna use this i've never used this primer but um dixie divine i've talked about her a lot on this channel she gave it to me oh it's colored wait Oh, light tint. Okay, this is a this is an SPF sweat absorbing lasting matte primer. I don't typically go for matte primers, but we'll see. We'll see how I like this. Let me see. It's really fluffy. Is it whipped or something? This is a very new texture for a primer. Oh my god, it's so smooth. It actually does feel a little bit more like a smooth, like whipped sunscreen or something, which is honestly fine. It actually is pretty mattifying. I feel like I feel like my skin is getting um flatter. Wow, that is a texture in a primer that I wouldn't usually go for, but I'm not hating it. I'm actually kind of liking it a lot. It makes me feel like I probably shouldn't have put on sunscreen beforehand, though. This does feel like it has sunscreen, like a heavier amount of sunscreen than I thought it does. Okay, so this is a sunscreen. It's essentially, yeah, it's literally SPF 30, which is what I just applied to my face. Okay, so I guess we did double the sunscreen today, <laughs> but we'll go in with my, uh, the e.l.f. liquid putty primer. I love this stuff. This stuff is so, uh, it fills in all your pores. I just applied some color corrector to my brows to lighten them up a little bit, and now I'm going in with a tiny little beauty sponge and blending out that color corrector just so it's not so insane. Now I'm gonna apply some of that color corrector left on the sponge onto my mustache. 
Mustache, yeah. That's one of the songs off my new EP that I'm coming out with. Mustache. It's called Mustache. Do you guys enjoy how annoying I am? I don't want to talk about Drag Race anymore. I want to make a full global all-stars video and if it never happens, it never happens because I just get bored or busy. I don't know. The camera moved. I am so, so, so sorry. Um, I had just cleaned off the lens and so hopefully, actually not hopefully. Why did I do that? I don't want you to see me better. I look crazy right now. Um, we're gonna go in with a little bit of... Okay, I'm gonna stop doing that. We're gonna go into a little bit of orange color corrector on my beard. Did I shave literally last night at midnight before I went to bed? Uh, yes I did. And is the five o'clock shadow intense? Yes it is. Now we're just gonna blend that color corrector out. I've been trying to open myself up to criticism lately. I only started going to therapy about a couple, well actually it probably was about the beginning of this year. I went to therapy last summer. It didn't work for me very well because my therapist was a little bit, she uh, she felt a little homophobic and I was like, that's not the kind of therapist I need. You know, I, I need a therapist that agrees with my right to live. <laughs> Basically, I started going to therapy and um, it's been really good for me. But one thing that surprised me, like I'm, I'm very self-aware. I usually know exactly what my issues are. I did not know that I was a perfectionist. I genuinely didn't think that I was a perfectionist. I just thought that I was really hard on myself because I'm anxious. I thought all my problems stemmed from my anxiety and then she, whenever she was telling me, it sounds like you have this I idealism of a perfectionist, these expectations of a perfectionist. Why do you expect yourself to be perfect at everything? And I'm not gonna lie to you, it's not easy to turn off that part of your brain that expects perfection from yourself to just suddenly be like I don't I don't feel like making everything perfect anymore I still struggle from it so much and at the last drag show I did I felt like shit afterwards I felt horrible about my performance just because I was like you could have done better you could have done so much better than you did I was disappointed that I had injured myself I know that I didn't collect as much money as I did at my first show and part of it was probably because at my first show, they introduced me as a new queen, and so everyone was like, yay, new queen, let's give her money. Now that I'm a recurring queen, it's like, I've lost the like, the newness. And also there were just less people there that time. So I should be very proud of myself for how much money I did make. The first show I ever performed at was a Chapel Rome theme show after Pride. So there were going to be a lot of people. So there's no reason for me to be this harsh on myself. But it's so hard to break out of those thought processes. It's so hard to not expect yourself to be perfect. I'm going in with my Meron Cream Blend Stick in the shade Light 4, I think it is. Now that winter's over and my tan is fading, I wonder if this is gonna be too dark on me. I've been really trying to make the use of my makeup more efficient and like try to use less of my makeup because sometimes you don't need all that much and the, i mean this sponge girl she has seen better days i'm also like not to sound vain but i am really beautiful out of drag so like i don't feel the need to change all that much about my face and about my skin and all that i think i'm just confident i i think i just have a reasonable amount of self-love and self-respect and sometimes i feel bad about it because as a kid i was taught not to feel that way about myself. I was taught shame. Hashtag church, woo! Anyways, I've been trying to open myself up to criticism because I, I am really hard on myself and anything you tell me is probably something either I've been avoiding or I've told myself already. But I posted on the drag Reddit a picture of my new style of drag that I'm about to get into. I asked for critiques and a lot of people were super nice about it. A lot of people were like, I would just like thin out the eyebrows or maybe I would do bigger hair or whatever. I don't have bigger hair so that's kind of not an option but it was a lot of helpful tips and for once I actually listened to the criticism and I tried to absorb it and not take it personally I tried to take it as people trying to help me because I understand people are just trying to help mm, we're getting some weird textures on my eyebrows today that's uh wasn't the goal this is what happens when you switch up your routine a little bit I'm using some new techniques and products today and I'm still trying to figure out if I like a lot of it or not oh f I was supposed to powder over the color corrector. That's why things are going weird today. You can still see my eyebrows, can't you? So something I learned from Morphine is that she doubles up her foundations. And I, since I started drag, I've been using the Milani uh, foundation and concealer, Conceal and Perfect two-in-one foundation and concealer. Did y'all see the dude that smashed that autograph Taylor Swift guitar that wasn't an authentic Taylor Swift guitar and also wasn't her authentic autograph? That is so stupid. 
he really thought he did something. I, I laughed whenever I saw that video because I was like, girl, just what do you think you're doing? I feel like I maybe should have done this reverse order where I should have done the Milani foundation first and then the Meron cream stick or cream blend foundation. Honestly though, it kind of is what it is. It doesn't look that bad. I just wish that I had done it the reverse order so that my skin had a little bit of a different uh, texture. Okay, so I'm kind of done talking about my insecurities and being very vulnerable to you. Let's talk about the boy. Sometimes people are just not the ones for you. Okay, sorry, one of my friends called me. Ali Keen, if y'all know her, she was in the Grown Up music video. So what was I talking about before? I was talking about the boy. Oh my God, there's tea. We're gonna go in with this eyebrow pomade that I got from Amazon. Okay, first eyebrow on. Um, do these look even to you? No, okay. Hmm, okay, it's fine, it's cool. You can say that we are nothing but- So we start my eyebrows like that. So I'm gonna go from the middle here. Okay, so are they similar? Nope, these are two different eyebrows, for sure. Why am I on the struggle bus right now? What is going on? I'm trying to convince myself that I don't hate it. Fun fact about me, you guys, I have a unibrow. Uh, used to be ashamed of it. Not so much anymore. I do still pluck it because I like having two separate eyebrows, but I'm not, uh, it's not something I'm, a, I'm ashamed to admit anymore. As a kid, like in sixth grade, whenever I was getting my eyebrows waxed, I would have been like, no, I don't have a unibrow, you guys. I literally don't have a unibrow. Even though everyone's like, girl, you have a unibrow. Okay, before I go in with any more of my highlight shade, I'm gonna contour. It looks like we're at the end of this contour's life. Yeah, looking at it now, I probably should have done contour, then eyebrows, then highlight, but it's fine. One of the critiques that Dixie Divine gave me was that I need to be a little bit draggier with my makeup. Like, baby queens have a fear of doing makeup too intensely, partially because, like, you know, makeup is so expensive, uh, you don't want to get it wrong, so you go very small with it, and you can get away with going small with your makeup because when you're young, you're just pretty. But let's do drag, you guys. Let's do drag. Okay, so let's go back to talking about this boy. Oh, Shouldn't have talked while I was doing my jawline. I forget that I can't just talk whenever I like it. As a woman, it's my job to be silent and let a man handle, I can't even say that seriously. So whenever I last talked to you guys about this boy, he was making me very happy. By the way, if this boy is watching, know that I don't really care all that much and you shouldn't too. This doesn't matter. We knew each other for a very short time. So this should not matter to you at all. He and I were in a pretty good place for a while where we were just flirting every day and having really good conversations. We had a lot of common interests and stuff. I'm moving to Denver, probably in February. Ainsley, Abby and I, uh, we were planning on, you know, making an apartment tour and we found an apartment in Denver and our plan was originally to move in October. It's currently October, so you can guess where the story is going, but we found an apartment and we put in an application for it and I texted this boy and I said, we found an apartment in Denver. Is this something that you still want to pursue even though I'm probably going to be leaving in a couple months. We decided amicably that we didn't want to be uh, together if I was just going to be leaving, which is totally understandable, I feel like. So even though it sounds like we ended things amicably, we actually ended up talking for a while more. And whenever I got my application back from the apartment, they had denied it because allegedly, we'll get to that in a second, but allegedly I had bad credit. Yeah, they were like, yeah, you have no credit. And I was like, well, duh, I don't have a credit card. But that meant that our plan of moving in October was probably gonna have to be pushed back to next year while we build credit. So I texted him and I was like, hey, I'm not leaving yet. <laughs> and um, I know this is like kind of toxic, but I was like, do you wanna keep pursuing things? No, it's not that toxic. I, there was clear communication. In my head, I thought we had decided, yeah, now that you're not leaving, Let's just see where this goes. And I'm not trying to start shit with this boy and I'm not going to reveal his identity at all because I don't want any of y'all to start shit with this boy. Well, he and I started talking again. Then out of the blue one day, uh, he mentioned that he was talking to other people. He was like one of the other boys that I'm talking to. And I was like, oh, just one of the other boys you're talking to. And I know that we had never decided um, to be in a committed relationship. I'm, I'm fully aware that this was not like a commitment thing. We were just seeing where things were gonna go. But we had previously had a conversation about like how we wanted to be together, even though for like four days, 
I told him, maybe let's not just because I'm gonna be leaving. All right, now I'm gonna go in with this air spun powder, so I'm gonna have to shut up for a minute. So while I'm letting the powder bake into my skin, I'm going to actually finish this story. Essentially, he started mentioning he was talking to other boys, and I was like, oh, okay. And I, tr I tried to be okay with it, because I was like, that's fair. I told him that I didn't want to be with him. It makes sense that he already started talking to other people. But now that I'm back with him, I, I don't know. I guess I can't expect him to just cut off everything with everyone. But we got into a really long conversation one night. He was freaking out and he was like, I think I just play this like persona of someone who is a player. I think I'm just going a little bit crazy trying to keep up this act. I said, hey, if me walking out would make things easier for you to make a decision, I'll gladly do it. And he told me he did not want me to go. He told me he wanted me to stay. So I stayed assuming that that meant that he did want me. I don't know why my foolish ass thought that that was the case, because his actions showed otherwise. He would always talk about other men. He would always talk about how he missed his ex. So I stopped responding to him as often, and I would still respond occasionally and be very nice and like chat with him. I directly addressed it. I said, the more I get to know you, the less comfortable I am with the idea of sharing you. And he told me, you, you wanna know what he told me? Well, you'll find someone one day Okay, so you don't want me. Okay, oh, okay. So you don't want me. Gotcha. So you so you just want me around to give you attention, but you don't want me. No, I was like, okay, so you don't want me. That's fine. Um, I'm gonna stop responding as often. Then he posted this shit on his Instagram story, on on his close friend story, about, mind you, that I'm on. Me when Mr. Mix Signals decides he likes me today. I'm Mr. McSignals. I'm Mr. McSignals. And again, he's talking to four boys. So how am I supposed to know that that's about me? I don't know that that's about me, but it feels so targeted because at the time I was like trying to wane off his attention, just give him less attention because he's got four other boys to give it to him. If I'm Mr. McSignals, then how come he's the one telling me, no, no, please don't go. I want you to stay. And then the next day being like, well, you'll find someone one day. You don't want me. You don't want me, and it's as simple as that. You don't want me. He was too young for me anyway. Like, I need someone who's gonna take their shit seriously. I need a man. I don't need a boy. I don't need to play games. Like, I, I genuinely don't like playing games when it comes to relationships. I don't want this toxic shit. I'm toxic enough to myself. I don't care that much. I don't hold any grudges against you, sir. And I'm happy being alone. I'm very comfortable being single. I'm back, I was letting the powder bake for a little bit and I know the caffeine is wearing off because I'm starting to feel like I need to take a nap in the middle of the makeup. There's this little like glue texture moment that's like uh, under my highlight. Do you, wanna, do you guys wanna see it? Y'all need to leave Chapel Run the fuck alone. Some of y'all do not understand nuance. Some of y'all do not understand basic humanity. Like y'all are being so mean to her right now. Let's all be reminded that she's 26 years old just becoming a singer. This is all very overwhelming. Just because it's her lifelong dream does not mean that you guys get to harass her the way that y'all have. Okay, then I'm gonna take this deeper shade, go into the pocket of my cheek, and that's how I get my snatched cheekbones. I told myself I was gonna stop singing a long time ago. I don't know why I'm not listening. Just make this forehead a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna go in with a white eyeshadow and highlight this nose contour a little bit more. And I'm gonna highlight under my brows too, just make the very edges of my brow a little brighter. Okay, then I'm gonna wipe off the white shadow and I'm gonna go in with my favorite brown in this palette. You guys can't see what I'm doing, can you? I've been doing this all off camera, haven't I? What the fuck? What the fuck is going on with my nose contour right now? This has never happened before. Oh fuck, I don't wanna use this blush actually. I don't wanna use this blush. We kinda have to use a little bit more of it though just to make this even, but yeah, nope, nope, not this blush. I'm gonna use the Trixie Cosmetics Back to the Fuchsia because this has the perfect shades of blush for me, especially since I think I'm gonna do a purple look today. And then put a little bit on my nose and a little bit on my chin. And a little around my head, I love head. Okay, what was I gonna do? Oh yeah. So now we're going in with Meron Clown White. With this itty bitty elf angled liner brush, we're gonna take some of it on the end of here and we're gonna draw a little tiny circle. So we got that tiny little dot on the end of my nose. Now we're going to powder over it. Just a tiny bit of powder. We're just gonna powder over my nose and try not to breathe because this has talc in it. Talc, talc, talc. <coughs> um, I've got to finish these brows. I've really got to finish these brows. I'm like not, I don't want to do them. I do What the f is that? Where did that come from? 
Do y'all see that? That little... What's that? Why did I do that? Go away. Is it time to start doing shadow? Let's do some shadow. So this, I just got this palette on Depop because it was like five bucks. Um, and I've always wanted to try Juvia's Place. One of my good sisters, Vanity, she's the one who actually suggested that I get Juvia's Place palettes. You guys know, like, my signature color is purple. Purple, red, black are my, like, signature colors. Mostly purple, and I want to do a purple look today. This has the most beautiful purples in it. Oh, no, actually, we're going to sketch out the shape of... Jesus Christ, I'm all over the place today. We're going to go into Lavish. There's this purple right here that I'm going to use to just sketch out the shape of my eye. Uh... Am I doing two different shapes for my eyes now too? I'm usually pretty good at symmetry with my eyes. Something that I hate is that a lot of people have compared my makeup to Trixie Mattel. We all have a distinct way that we like to paint. And so I know that I do these giant triangles and I know I do big graphic white liner under my eyes. I mean, Trixie is a huge inspiration, but that's not what I'm going for. I'm not aiming to be like Trixie Mattel. I truly am just trying to do my own thing. I don't I don't want to be compared to anyone else. Like I I don't know. It does bother me a lot whenever people say, "Oh, you do your you do your makeup just like Trixie." It's like, I don't. Let's uh go in with a little bit of a thicker, denser packer brush and we're going to start putting on these purples. So I'm going into this Juvia's Place palette, and I'm taking that lightest matte. Okay, Vanity, why did you lie? I'm not seeing any pigment. Do I need to get more on my brush or something? Oh, I hate to say it, but Juvia's Place, you're not giving me the pigment I need. Oh no, this purple is not giving me the pigment I need. Okay, so we're probably gonna stick to ColourPop. It almost looks like a crayon. How do y'all pronounce crayon? I used to pronounce it crown when I was in elementary school, but whenever I figured out how it's spelled, I was like, oh, crayon. If you pronounce it crown, sure. If you pronounce it crayon, sure. If you pronounce it crayon, I have no respect for the way that you pronounce that word. And we're using escapism. Hi. Why are you talking? You're talking so much. Are you trying to say hi to all my subscribers? <gasps> He's trying to say hi to all my subscribers. Hi, bud. <laughs> he says hello. It's time for the white. And I know that like white liner is typical for this type of stuff, but I just find that like I work better with clown white, even if it starts to get a little bit patchy after a while. Today I really said symmetry, we don't know her. Please welcome to the sage, symmetry. I have this now, I'm gonna go over it to make it whiter with Trixie Cosmetics Play Pigment. I might rub Vaseline all over here. So we're gonna take Ben Nye Super White and I'm gonna do my best not to get this directly in my eyes, but I'm gonna set all the white right here. Whenever I become a rich, famous person, I'll start using white liner just because I know that it works better. So speaking of becoming rich and famous, um, I did just start my Patreon. You guys should definitely go check it out at least. I call it the Absent Fathers Club. That's what I'm calling my fan base now is I'm calling them the Absent Fathers Club. Oh, just stabbed the triangle right into my eye. But my Patreon is great. So if you want to help support me, please go do that. See how whenever I powder now, it's creasing a little bit. Where's my freckle pen? That's my freckle pen. Oh my God, okay. Remember how much I hate Revolution products? This freckle pen kind of eats, I'm not gonna lie. My sister's always been complimented on her freckles and I've always wanted freckles like her. She has really nice freckles. Now that that has been done, we're gonna do the black liner. We're gonna do the black liner. Oh my God, why are my lashes sticking together? Give him to me. Oh. Do y'all know what I'm referencing? Y'all, I've been kind of on a Barbie film kick. Ugh. My powder got in my water. I just got Barbie and the Diamond Castle from a thrift store for like $1. We're gonna go in with the ColourPop uh, Feather Effect Brow Pen. Do some little flicks for eyebrow hairs. Cool, that just uh, makes my brows look a little bit more realistic, just a little bit. Now we're gonna go in with the NYX, you know, Epic Ink Liner. I feel like this is a standard for so many people and it is for me as well. Just like that, let's go over the top now. Okay, there we go. Now that we've defined that, I'm going to draw a line just to connect these two parts. If y'all have seen like how I've been trying to do my makeup, you can watch my makeup journey. This is finally what I've decided works. This is what I've decided works for me personally. And uh, I'm also gonna draw this little, yeah, like that. Cause I draw like little orcas on my eyes and I think it's really cute. And now I'm gonna draw a line straight down from here. It looks a little insane. Because my eyelids are hooded, so much gets lost in the crevices that you don't even see. So I've just learned to like not worry about getting every single spot clean. It's just about making it work. All right, so that's 
one orca almost done. I'm always surprised whenever liner pens start to die. I'm like, why? You're supposed to do this, except no, they're not. The eyeliner pens are not supposed to be abused the way that I abuse them. I'm like, do your fucking job. And they're like, you're making me work overtime right now. You're asking me to do something that was not in the job description. <sighs> I always start crying. So now that we've got two orcas on my face, we're going to go back in with some eyeshadow and just blend this out so it doesn't look so insane. I'm real particular about horror movies. As much as I like them, I am particular about what is featured in horror movies. See, that's already looking better, but we're going to go in You know what? Maybe this purple is gonna work if I give it a chance on this white. It's very underwhelming. Is this is this buildable? Is this buildable at all? Jubia, for being on a white background, I'm just not seeing the pigment. It's it's kind of there. The idea of it is there. I'm really trying to like it, Jubia. I really want you to succeed, but I need more pigment from this palette. You're going to give me several stunning purples and then not come through on the pigment of it. I just, I know that not everyone is looking for drag makeup, but I just, is it so wrong to want color eyeshadows to show up as the color they are? Are we loving it? I'm loving it. Y'all, my left eye is burning so bad right now. Can y'all see how red? I see you. I think it's time for lips. I think it's time for lips. Tell me what I should get from Juvia's Place. What is good from Juvia's Place? Going in with this, uh, this brown NYX Epic Ink Liner. Like, it looks a little bit crazy, but it makes my mouth look slightly bigger. So I start with the purple one. Okay, that's my lip. That might be the most even I've ever gotten my upper lip. It's, a uh, obviously it's not even, but it's the most even I've ever gotten it. And now I'm gonna go in with the, uh, the ColourPop reddish... It's kind of like a cool-toned red. I'm gonna go in and fill in my lips with this. I know it's uneven. I know it's uneven, but... I like it. I like how this looks. Okay. I hate my life. You mean to tell me this whole time I had my LEDs off? So my go-to color is now this ColourPop Ultra Matte Liquid Lipstick in the shade Risk Taker. And it is so beautiful. I love this red so much. So I'm gonna take my lightest concealer and uh, do one little dot right there. And that's how I contour my lips. That's how I, that's my new favorite lip routine. Later, I'm gonna go in with this lip gloss, but I wanna get all my drag on. It's the uh, NYX Professional Nope. It's the NYX Fat Oil Coconut Mango Setting Spray. I like to feel like I'm drowning in it. What even brand is this? Beauty Creations. I got sent this in an Ipsy box. So now I'm gonna put on highlighter now. Grab a little highlighter brush and uh... Perfect. I'm gonna do more. I'm not used to a small amount of highlighter. And see, we're beautiful now. And now I'm gonna put on my little heart, okay? got my heart on it's so muggy out here you know that george's video that i'm thinking of i'm gonna give myself just one last little spritz with the milani make it last uh i think this is a natural finish setting spray just a little bit all right i'm gonna go put on some clothes and i'll be right back you know what i totally forgot lashes so hold on let me put this wig cap back on let's curl them okay so now that my lashes are curled Mascara. So I'm gonna do something different. I saw this on a YouTube short. I don't know if I should trust it, but I thought I'd at least try it. Yeah, that feels like it's not doing anything, so whatever. And now we're gonna glue these lashes that I literally made myself. I literally made these lashes. It's like a million different lashes stacked on top of the other. And they're huge. They're like giant little caterpillars. <laughs> No, but literally, where's my my clock? I'm, I'm, just, I'm trying to say, where's my clock? I just keep saying instead, because it's funny. All right, I mean, we've got two lashes on now, and I close my eyes, I can't see, as uh, the great Brittany Broski once said. You know what? Looking at this, I feel like I put these on the wrong eyes. That's why they were looking weird. And I'm gonna be so honest, I don't really care. This part is not glued down. So you know that feeling whenever you do something and you know you're supposed to do something else, but you can't remember what it was? Yeah, I forgot to put on bottom lashes too. I just now realized as I sat down and saw the bottom lashes right in front of me, I was like, oh. Okay, basically we're in drag. I'm so glad that we have bangs just to hide whatever the f is going on with these eyebrows. This is gonna sound crazy, but I feel like I'm having muscle spasms in my eyelids right now, just because these lashes are so heavy. 
It's kind of giving me a headache, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, there we go. One bottom lash on. Okay, we have our bottom lashes on. This is, wait, should I show you the full look? Okay, I'll show. <laughs> you ask me to show off, oh my God. You're literally like stiff arming me into showing off. Okay, I'm not wearing body because you're not gonna see it in this video, but basically, oh! It's a shirt and a skirt. I like this skirt though. Not usually blonde, usually I'm dark haired, but today I'm blonde. So that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please check out my music and please, please, oh my God, lip gloss. Girl, we are a mess today. Okay, that, I just love lip gloss. That really pulled the look together. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna go record another YouTube video now just for you guys. Please ch make sure to check out my music in the description. Please make sure to check out my Patreon. I, it's called the Absent Fathers Club. So if you wanna join the Absent Fathers Club, feel free. I would really appreciate if you would help me do this full time. And I'm like a little bit desperate for money. I just did something illegal and it didn't work out for me. So um, extra money would be great right now. Make sure to like, subscribe, all the YouTube things, and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.